Greetings, everybody. Uh, check the description. I have an Odyssey account now, and uh, World Truth had problems, and they had to move their servers. So, in the description or comments, there will be a link to where I am, and just in case there are problems with uh, you know who tube. But this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Turn your King James Bible to Ephesians chapter 3. There is an entire agenda against the Apostle Paul and uh, I say don't believe it. I have put too much studying into the Bible and that includes Paul. Paul gave his life for Christ. He persecuted the church and killed people for you know uh, for their faith. But uh, he was met on the road to Damascus. And there's a new thing coming out that says, well, you know, there's, uh, there's no two witnesses for Paul being an apostle. Well, okay, that's true. And uh, somebody sent me a thing on that. I says, well, was there two witnesses that uh, Moses was a call to the Lord? Uh, where's the two witnesses that says Moses was called to the Lord? Uh, there isn't. But they want you to think that Paul is a false apostle. Well, guess what? All the apostles met with Paul in Jerusalem, and the book of Acts records this, and not one time did the Holy Spirit ever tell any of the apostles, beware this guy, he's bad news. He's a false apostle. That didn't happen, people. You don't think God in his infinite knowledge and glory and wisdom and power would not have bothered to tell the apostles that Paul was a fake? Uh, I think he would have. But hey, that's just me. I mean, they'll tell you that the book of Acts is wrong. Of course, they'll tell you the entire Bible's wrong. You know, if you listen to them long enough. All I know is people like William Tyndale died to give us a Bible. And all these Hebrew roots people and uh, all these... Others, uh, they, they're not dying for their faith. Don't be looking for Mormons to die for their faith. Don't be looking for Jehovah's Witnesses to die for their faith. Their faith is in the Mormon church. Their faith is in the Watchtower Society. And don't be looking for the Hebrew Roots people to die for the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. No. No. With that in mind, we're going to read Ephesians chapter 3. There are four dimensions that Paul uh, writes about. Four dimensions. We live in a three-dimensional world. So, let's take a look. And then we'll discuss what is the fourth dimension. Well, my guess Verse 1, for this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you, Gentiles. That word Gentiles just means nations. It is the Greek word ethnos, where we get the word ethnic, like an ethnic group. You know, Caucasians are an ethnic group. Negro is an ethnic group. Verse 2, if you have heard of the dispensation of grace uh, dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word 
Uh, that word dispensation means to dispense, to give something. Guess what Christ gave us? Grace. Moses gave us the dispensation of law that he received at the hand of God. And of course, you listen to Baptists, they'll tell you, oh, there's seven dispensations. Really? Uh, as far as I can tell, there's an Old Covenant and a New Covenant. Old Testament, New Testament. Law and grace. So where do they come up with seven dispensations? And that word dispensation only appears in the Bible four times. Uh, four plus zero does not equal seven. Unless, of course, you're a pre-trib Zionist dispensational Baptist, which is... Uh, yeah, I went to one of their Bible colleges, so, you know, don't be trying to tell me what the Baptists believe, because I know exactly what they believe. Six years, master's degree, buddy boy, or girly girl. So I know exactly what they teach. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote a in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. See, Christ dying on the cross, shedding his blood for us, that was a mystery. Because had they known, had the devils known, you know, they wouldn't have killed Christ. They'd have let him die of old age or something, you know? What is this mystery? Well, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and you know why they don't like Paul? Paul records a lot of prophecy, a lot of prophecy about the end times and then warns about the, the man of sin, the Antichrist, the son of perdition, the beast, he gives a lot of warnings about that. They want to throw, want you to throw away all those warnings so that he, the devil will have free reign. I recently had somebody tell me Paul, wasn't a, um, Paul was not a prophet. What? Paul, Paul wrote a lot of prophecy. If you're, if you're writing prophecy, you're a prophet. You may not be called a prophet, but you're a prophet. And I'm not talking about getting money. All right. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. Paul, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If they would have known, they wouldn't have crucified Christ. They wouldn't have done it. And when it's talking about the princes of this world, we're talking about the, the angels. And I think my next Bible series is going to be on Satan, the God of this world. I've covered a lot of the similar material, but it's kind of spread out over several studies. But we're going to study why is, you know, I mean, Satan's, Paul called uh, Satan the God of this world. Why is that? Why isn't God the God of this world? God the Father. Probably because uh, maybe God gave Satan a lease on the planet for a while. And uh, he knows this time is getting short. That's what I'm kind of guessing. All right. Uh, all right. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 4. Whereby, when you read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, 
which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, and is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Bob's note here. Now, they love to tell you, oh, Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles, and then they'll try to tell you, well, they're non-Jews. Eh, you can say that if you want. But Israel and Judah were two different people. Totally different people. They had different kings, different land areas. They had wars against each other. Jeremiah 3.8, God divorced Israel, but not Judah. There was 12 tribes. Judah was only one of them. So when they tell you that Gentile means non-Jew, well, I guess you could say that. But it doesn't mean they were non-Israel. Where did Paul go in his preaching? He went to Greece. He went to North Africa. I believe. I'm think, let me think about that. I'm not sure. But he definitely went to uh, Italy. And, you know, Greece and Italy. And what can I tell you? He went to Europe. And I consider Greece part of Europe. Did he go to India? No. Did he go to China? No. Uh, let's see. Did he go to uh, Ethiopia? No. Did he go to the Congo? No. Nigeria? Uh, no. He didn't. He didn't go to Japan. He didn't go to Mongolia. He didn't go there. He went to Europe and Greece. So... Read Jeremiah 3.8 and compare that with Jeremiah 31.31. 31. Verse 8. Unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And to make all men see that is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hidden God who created all things by Jesus Christ. You know, the, the Bible tells you that God created all things and the, Paul tells you that Jesus Christ created all things. Read 1 Timothy 3.16. God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus was God come in the flesh. God needed a perfect sinless sacrifice. God the Father got a perfect sinless sacrifice in his Son. But if you listen to the Jehovah's Witnesses, they'll tell you, oh, well, Jesus is really Michael the Archangel. Uh, don't listen to them. They're idiots. What they don't tell you is, is that from their creation... Uh, I think they were created around the 1890s or something or other. Up until 1963, they used the King James Bible. But then when people were reading their King James Bible, that contradicted their perversion of beliefs, they would say, hey, wait a minute, you're teaching this, but my Bible says that. Uh, something's up here. Jehovah's Witnesses. So what they do, what they had to do was they had to write, rewrite the Bible. Make their own New World Order translation. I mean the New World Translation. 
New World Order translation, yeah. But, and they had to turn Jesus into a God. Yeah. The word A doesn't appear there, but, you know, they got to insert it. Uh, so, which from the beginning of the world hath been hidden God who created all things by Jesus Christ. Verse 10. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ, Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access by confidence by the faith of him. Wherefore I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Yeah, don't faint because of his troubles. Which he's doing for us, which is our glory. Verse 14, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. There's an inner man, and I guess there's an outer man, which is the flesh, which in God's eyes, he probably hates this flesh. But, you know, right now, this is what we got. Verse 17 that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Oh, yeah. Love. That's what uh, Paul says, right? And then they'll tell you that Paul teaches something different than Jesus. Well, in Matthew 22, somebody asked Jesus, well, what, what's the great commandment in the law? And then in verse 37, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Does that sound like Paul's teaching a different thing? Not to me. Maybe to them. Verse 39, And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Well, guess what? Our neighbors were to be, uh, well, we were supposed to be a separated and segregated people. You weren't supposed to have Satanists living in your land. You were supposed to do what the Bible says to do with them. Which is why... They fight so hard to pervert the scriptures because these people know, these people know for a fact what would happen if there was a massive revival in this country. They know the bars and liquor companies would go out of business the movie theaters would close. The abortion clinics would close. There'd be a lot of people hanging by the neck from trees. A lot of them. A lot of them. There'd be a rope shortage for probably a year. San Francisco would have a lot of vacant real estate. They know this. Child kidnappings would disappear, vanish. I mean, not the children, but the, the people that do this stuff. There'd be so very few children kidnappings, and I'm not talking about parental kidnappings. No, I'm talking about the hundreds of thousands of kids that vanish every year in this country. Murders would go down to virtually nothing. But there's a group 
that doesn't want to see that happen. Oh yeah, they know their lives would be in danger. They know there would be problems if there was a true revival. They know this. All right, Ephesians 3 and verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Verse 18, listen to this carefully. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, one, and length, two, and depth, three, and height, four. Breadth, length, depth, height, four dimensions. We're going to go back to this. And to know the love of Christ, which path passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church of Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Now, if you want, you can read about uh, the three dimensions, three-dimensional, 3D. That's what 3D means. How high something is, how long something is, and how wide something is. But Paul says there was four. What is this fourth dimension? Breadth, length, depth, and height. Uh, about 15 years ago, I looked up all these words, uh, breadth, length, depth, and height in the Greek. And to be honest with you, I forgot. And I'm lazy. I don't feel like looking them all up. Just know that there's four of them. Breadth, length, depth, and height. Four. But yet we're in three dimensions. So what's up with that, Chaplain Bob? Why, why are you making such a big deal out of this? Well, let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at uh, what I believe is a spiritual dimension. Turn to the book of Kings, 2 Kings. We're going to look at chapter 6, and we're going to start reading in verse 8. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel. And I remember, you had Israel and you had Judah. They had different kings, you know? But uh, your Bible scholars, they got doctorate degrees, you know, eight years of Bible college. Oh, they're all the same. They're all Jews. Yeah, right. They're all paid for whores. That's what they are. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. So don't go by there, because the Syrians are uh, their camp there, their army. You're going to have trouble if you go there. That's the Bob translation. Verse 10, And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, and saved himself there, not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing, and he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? In other words, one of you people's a spy that's telling the king of Israel, my enemy, what, what our plans are. So which one of you is a spy? Verse 12. And one of the servants said, None, my lord, O king. But Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. You know, and, you know, pillow talk, right? He knows everything you're saying. And he, the king of Syria, and he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. And no, that's not Alabama. 
They probably named Dothan, Alabama after, uh, never mind. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. So here it is. He sent a, an army, part of his army, probably a, you know, it said a great host. And they compassed the city. That means they surrounded it. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? Oh, the city's surrounded. What are we going to do? And he, Elisha, and he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Listen to this carefully. Verse 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Ah, open his spiritual eyes so he can see into the spirit realm, which my opinion is probably the fourth dimension. That's my guess. And when they had come down to him, Elisha prayed with the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And if you want, you can keep reading. Uh, the army, the Syrian, uh, the Syrian army was struck with blindness. And then Elisha took them and led them into Samaria, which was the capital of Israel. Jerusalem was the capital of Judah. And then here it is, all these soldiers are in the capital. And the king of Israel's there like, whoa, thank you for bringing this uh, army to our doorstep. Now we can, you know, they're, uh, they're in our hands now. But uh, Elisha told him, eh, give them food and water and let them go. I mean, can you imagine the soldiers going back to the king of Syria and saying, uh, we all went blind, and then we found ourselves in Israel, in the capital city, surrounded by the Is Is Israelite army. Israelite, not Israeli. And they gave us food and drink and let us go. Uh, and then the king says, well, go back and fight them. Uh, I don't think so, king. You know, next time, the Lord might not be so generous, you know. I mean, that would be a story, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. So, but this is back when the Lord was trying to turn the hearts of Israel back to him. That's why the Lord sent Elisha the prophet, Elisha. Elisha. But did it work? No. They went into apostasy, just like our people today. You know, nobody nobody cares. Almost nobody cares. It's sad. I don't, you know, you try to warn them. But you know what? All these heretics on television would not be able to get away with all this garbage if people would bother reading their Bibles. You know, like I said, Tyndale was burned at the stake with pieces of paper from his own Bible that they used for kindling. He was burned alive trying to give the Bible so people could read it in their own language. And people will not even bother to pick it up and read it. 
people died for the word and they won't even bother picking it up. I call it the three B's. As long as they got a burger, a beer, and a ball game. As long as they got a ball game, a burger, burger, and a beer, they don't care. Well, buddy boy, let me tell you something. They're going to care soon. God's going to bring end time judgment to this country and the West, the Europe too. They're going to see you, you know, they think this, uh, what's going on now, you know, with the masks and everything, they think this is something. Oh, wait, there's going to be famine and there's going to be a real pestilence, a real plague. I mean, there's going to be untold millions dying off millions people think it's a joke but it's going to happen and then uh, they'll probably blame those of us that didn't trust the uh, trust the science yeah right who's science so all right so is the fourth dimension the spiritual dimension you know you got horses and chariots of fire, but we can't see them, but they're there. Is that the fourth dimension, a spiritual dimension? I think so. I honestly think so. And another thing too, don't fall for this Mandela effect that, that they call it. You know, uh, they're saying that Satan's going back in time and changing the Bible. I'm like, what? Really? They named it for Nelson Mandela, the black communist. I got a picture of him stand with his fist upright, clenched uh, before a communist flag with a nice uh, Joe, and his last name was Slovo, S-L-O-V-O. -O. Look his name up. Yeah, he was part of the African National Congress, which is a communist group. They admit it. Guess where he was from? Eastern Europe. I heard his family was fluent in Yiddish. Yeah. Yeah. That should tell you all you need to know. So, um, yeah. And he probably had a very nice rabbi. So, Putin also has a rabbi. He's got his own. You know, Putin's got his own personal rabbi. Oh, yeah, he does. When Putin goes overseas, guess who's with him? Oh, yeah, you guessed it. So, all right, everybody. Like I say, I'm on Odyssey, uh, but I can't put a lot of stuff on Odyssey. They, uh, they have limits on the size of your videos and the number of videos. And then World Truth had to move. Uh, they had problems with uh, the company with where their servers were because the company country didn't like some of the content. So they basically shut them down. So they basically had to do a quick move. And um, so they had to change the domain name. And that's why it's not working anymore. But in case you're interested... It's uh, worldtruthvideos.website. Yeah. So that's how uh, that worked. So, all right. Well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. And I hope you learned about the fourth dimension. I hope it makes sense. So, amen.